world. I'm Shobha Shukla, Managing Editor of CNS, and I welcome you all to this Curtain Razor Press Conference in the lead up to the 22nd International Conference on AIDS and STIs in Africa, or ICASA as we call it, which is the largest HIV AIDS conference in Africa that will be held in Harare, Zimbabwe from December 4 to December 9 this year. This is a hybrid press conference, and we have some journalist friends attending it from the auditorium of National AIDS Council of Zimbabwe in Harare itself, and many of us are online. Welcome to each one of you. The theme of ICASA 2023 is AIDS is not over, address inequalities, accelerate inclusion and innovation. Each of these words is so very important. Joining us today are eminent personalities from Zimbabwe and HIV and STIs thought leaders from other parts of the world to share their valuable insights and important highlights of the conference. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we begin. There will be a Q&A session after all the speakers have presented. Participants, please type in your questions in the Q&A box, which you must be seeing on your screen. Please also mention the name of your media outlet when you ask a question. I'm indeed honored to welcome our first speaker for today, Honorable Dr. Pagvasis David Paririyatwa, ICASA 2023 President and President of SAA, that is Society for AIDS in Africa, who are the official organizers of ICASA. A medical doctor by profession, Dr. Paririyatwa has served twice as Zimbabwe's Minister of Health in the past. Over to you, sir. You can hear me? Yes, we can. Very clearly. Thank you very much. Yes, my name is Dr. Pari Renyatwa. And like you rightly say, I'm the president of uh, SAA, who are the custodians of ICASA. And we are delighted to be having this press briefing as a precursor to our conference. You can hear me? Uh, yes. So this conference, as you are aware, is going to be held between the 4th and the 9th of December this year, but it will be preceded by two very important high-level meetings, which will be looking at, one, the elimination of mother-to-child transmission, and it will be spearheaded by the first ladies within the Africa region. And our first lady here in Zimbabwe will be chairing that particular meeting. And we've got various experts that have been invited to articulate that issue. So we're very pleased with that. That will happen on the 2nd of December. And then on the same day, there will be another high level meeting organized for the ministers of finance, also to articulate the issue of how finances can be raised in a, to enable the fight against HIV, TB, malaria, and other infectious diseases. So this particular uh, press briefing is just to say that uh, Zimbabwe is fully ready uh, to receive the possible 8,000 participants who will be coming to attend this meeting here in Harare. And we are very clear in our minds that the fight against HIV and AIDS must continue because as our theme says, AIDS is not yet over. So we need to continue to fight HIV and AIDS. There has been apparent complacency in the fight against HIV. People are now saying, well, I think uh, we have done enough for HIV, but I want to remind ourselves that there are still infections that are happening, especially among the youths uh, on, on HIV and AIDS. Therefore, we must continue to look at areas, the, the key areas where we must fight HIV and AIDS. And I, I must now just end by saying that we are inviting many other participants, especially the participants that uh, that, are, that are contributing towards the fight against HIV and AIDS in their own institutions. We would like them to come to ICASA. 
Our president, the president of Zimbabwe, I've just been speaking to him today, is extremely pleased that this particular conference will be happening here and we are welcoming everybody to come. And, I, and our own populations, the local population, is also very, very ready and willing to be uh, the host of this very important meeting. I will end there, uh, moderator, and then leave this uh, to others to, 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 to be able to expand on what I've said. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, it is indeed very heartening for me and I'm sure for all others to know that uh, ICASA 2023 is focusing on elimination of mother to child transmission because all of us so strongly believe that no child should be infected with HIV or die of it for mm -hmm. no fault of their own. So mm -hmm. I, I think that focus is really very necessary, high time for us to eliminate all mother to child transmission cases. Uh, I now invite our next speaker. Dr. Aspect, uh, sorry for uh, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, Dr. Aspect Magnich, who is Secretary for Health and Child Care, and he's representing Honorable Douglas Mombeshora, Minister of Health and Child Care and Vice President of ICASA 2023, who is unable to come due to some unforeseen circumstances. So welcome you and over to you, sir, Dr. As Aspect Magnich. I'm going to talk to the issue of uh, the logistics uh, in terms of uh, transportation, uh, both uh, ground and air transportation. Uh, we have made sure that we have an efficient transportation system, both on the ground and in air. Uh, we have a steady inflow of airlines, which are adequate to cover for our visitors. And we have also mobilized ground transport services and an agreed standard fare. Uh, as such, all designated vehicles and pickups for this for the drop off points will be marked. Uh, the issue of visas, uh, I want to encourage people who need visas to come to Zimbabwe to ensure that they start the process early, uh, whether they need to before traveling or on arrival. And uh, the third issue is uh, accommodation. And we have put a solid packages for all delegates. And delegates are advised to log on to the ICASA website on www.icasa2023saaafrica.org to secure their suitable accommodation before traveling. Uh, we also uh, want to, we've made sure that we've mobilized the issues of entertainment and food. And we are, we've engaged the industries uh, to ensure that our visitors experience both the progress of Africa and its unending cultural and entertainment appeal. Zimbabwe's profound and magnificent tourist destinations, which include the Victoria Falls, the Great Zimbabwe itself, the Mana Pools, and various parks, uh, some uh, which are close to Harare. So I want to urge our delegates to take time before and after the conference to visit these places and experience Zimbabwe's real cultural <clears throat> and wonders, and natural wonder wonders. Uh, as you have heard, uh, uh, the two high level meetings will happen in Victoria Falls, but the main conference will take place in Harare. But there are flights in between Harare and Victoria Falls, which is just one hour. We also have on 1 December the World AIDS Day. Uh, and our theme this year is Let Communities Lead. And as usual, we'll be taking the commemorations to communities. And this year, we'll be at Chinotimba Stadium in Victoria Falls. So these critical issues of uh, uh, transport. Uh, of visas, of accommodation, and entertainment, and uh, and food uh, are on course in terms of uh, the preparations. I want to thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, uh, while we are waiting for Madesma and Mr. Look, maybe there are some connectivity problems. We can, I think, move out of Zimbabwe to hear messages of support and solidarity from leaders around the world. I'm privileged to welcome Thomas Joseph, Head of AMR Awareness, Advocacy and Campaigns at the World Health Organization in Geneva. Welcome, sir. And we are really looking forward to hearing you speak. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shoba. And uh, thank you very much to all the organizers for inviting me to speak. 
I'm going to emphasize and talk about the issue of drug resistance and what we are now calling antimicrobial resistance more generally. So as you know, uh, people living with HIV are more likely to develop infections like tuberculosis, fungal meningitis, and other severe bacterial infections. But this is complicated by the threat of antimicrobial resistance, or AMR. So it makes those infections difficult or sometimes even impossible to treat. Antimicrobial resistance is a problem that is driven by misuse and by overuse of antimicrobial medicines, including antibiotics, antivirals, and results in critical medicines losing their effectiveness to treat infections. This is a very significant threat. HIV drug resistance, for example, is itself a very big problem, with estimates of 10% of adults having res resistance to some of the routinely used first-line treatment. Antiretroviral therapy has saved tens of millions of lives globally, but drug resistance is jeopardizing the efficacy of these medicines and resulting in an increasing number of treatment failures. Drug resistance in HIV is primarily driven by misuse and poor adherence to treatment. AMR in general, is associated with 5 million deaths a year. Besides this, there is the huge burden of morbidity and healthcare expenditure that can affect household welfare severely. The World Bank indeed estimates that global GDP could fall by $1 trillion to $3.4 trillion a year annually after 2030 due only to AMR. There are several issues of access and equity that also affects the issue of AMR. Research and development of new treatment options, including new antibiotics, is not prioritized due to a sector-wide market failure. As a result, we are running out of treatment options, and new drugs are simply not coming into the market. Even when new medicines finally reach the market, low- and middle-income countries are not able to access these due to intellectual property and pricing constraints. Antimicrobials should be regarded as global public health goods. Country governments should strengthen their health systems and push for universal health coverage so that all have access to needed antimicrobials prescribed, of course, by registered healthcare providers. I think the people working on AMR can learn from the rich history of HIV programs, especially in increasing awareness, in securing behavior change, and in promoting local, national, and global advocacy to address AMR effectively. I want to alert you or introduce you to World AMR Awareness Week, also called WAAW WOW, which is celebrated between 18th to 24th of November every year. WOW is meant to increase the visibility of AMR as it affects all sorts of diseases, including HIV. All stakeholders should realize that if we do not act now together as a globe, we could go back to a pre-antibiotic era when even simple infections became were untreatable. During WOW 2024, this November, therefore, I encourage everyone to consider organizing events focusing on HIV drug resistance or more broadly on drug resistance or AMR. Please wear the color blue to work to promote awareness of AMR and discuss drug resistance with people around you, blue being the color of AMR. Please post messages on drug resistance using your social media handles or publish a story celebrating how your community is working to prevent drug it's resistance. These actions will make a huge difference. I'm closing by thanking Shoba and the organizers for including AMR in this curtain raiser. I hope that this year's ICASA conference will be the most successful ever and will accelerate the HIV agenda in the continent so we can together end this end epidemic before 2030. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you for shining spotlight on antimicrobial resistance. And I'm sure this issue will receive due importance at ICASA 2023. And blue.
at every level. Thank you very much. I now request Dr. Ishwar Gilada, Asia Pacific Governing Council member at International Aid Society and President Emeritus of Aid Society of India to say a few words. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Shobha. Uh, when the issue comes about Africa, we feel that it is our own brothers, sisters uh, we are addressing to. Um, fortunately, I have been associated with Africa many years. Uh, at least between 2000 to 2005, I had been to at least 15 countries of Africa. I remember those days when uh, there were hardly any ARVs and they used to consider that any ARVs which are cheaper, they are not so good. And we needed to convince African people that everything cheaper may not be bad. So you, you need to experience yourself. Uh, secondly, uh, I, I, around 2000 or so, Whenever we used to go to Africa, most of the newspapers, half of them used to be obituaries. They used to do mass funerals. They used to do mass uh, uh, death ceremonies. Things have changed. Now, why am I addressing this? Because those people who are new in HIV management, they do not know what are the sufferings of those period. Sufferings were not only of patients, they were also sufferings of doctors, nurses, technicians. We used to lose a lot of patients. And not only uh, I, I uh, used to uh, teach doctors there and healthcare workers. I used to also learn because at that time we didn't have so many HIV cases. So a lot of things. I still remember Dr. Ahmad Latif who used to be in Harare and uh, he used to teach us that time. And I uh, also have a colleague of mine, uh, Susan Shumba. She is an IS governing council members, uh, member from Africa and she's from Zimbabwe. So with these kind of colleagues, we used to always work. Now, what I would like to tell my colleague uh, Thomas just spoke from WHO. All these organizations, WHO, UNAIDS, uh, President uh, Program, PEPFAR, Global Fund, all of them talk about HIV management, PEP, PrEP, uh, test and treat, only and only because India is in picture. You imagine the entire HIV scenario globally minus India. Why? What would have, what could have happened? At that time, all these patent owner companies were making huge profits. They were not providing medicines to Africa or India or anywhere. And we fought that battle in South Africa Supreme Court, patent versus patient. And fortunately, we won that battle against 64 major pharmaceutical industry in the world. So we have come long way from there. We still have challenges. I tell you one thing. India is a great friend of all South-South collaboration. Some of the drugs some of the combinations of ARV are not available in India, but they are available in Africa. For example, there's a combination of three drugs, 3TC, Dolutegravir, and TAF, which is not available in the Indian market, but it is available in Africa. So best of the things are made available to Africa at pretends of the cost. To just give you a cost comparison, if you remember hepatitis C test, uh, say uh, treatment came, it was $1,000 per day, $84,000 for a course of 84 days. And the company was so scared of India, they came to India, they gave a voluntary license to 11 companies in India and asked them to sell at $1,000 for a whole course. So $84,000 medicine was available from India only at $1,000. The 12th company came and they said, why not we? We have not given license. We will violate that kind of voluntary license. And they made the drug available for $250. So can you imagine there is a medicine available from patent owner and that medicine available from India, the cost difference is 0.3% of international cost, but 100% bioequivalent, same bioequivalence. So that way India has progressed. And today, 92% of the global HIV positive people are taking medicine from India. As Dr. Thomas said, there are challenges of antimicrobial resistance. There are issues, issues will keep on coming and we need to keep on addressing. One very important issue I would like to address here is that every place, whether it's Africa, India, or uh, southern uh, part of the world, we all do triple H test. One of the H is hepatitis B. We know that hepatitis B is negative. Still, we do not advise hepatitis B vaccination, which is again pretense of the cost. It doesn't cost if you buy in bulk within a one or two dollars for all three uh, dose of hepatitis B vaccine. And by giving three dose of hepatitis B vaccine, we prevent hepatitis B forever in life. So I think the two other major problem going to be in the world is going to be antimicrobial resistance 
and hepatitis B. And these are going to lead the next 10 years or 15 years of pandemic. And maybe uh, uh, HPV virus will join. So in this sense, AMR is preventable, hepatitis B is preventable, and we're still allowing it to happen. So I think uh, ICASA will develop these issue, uh, issues around these issues, discuss these issues threadbare, and maybe give a, a guidance for the next couple of years or so. Thank you very much, and all the best from India for the ICASA's success. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, good that you have sounded the danger bugle for the next few years, that is AMR, which uh, 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 Mr. Thomas has already mentioned, and hepatitis B as well. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and now I invite Mr. Sriram Natarajan, a leader on new innovative di diagnostics for HIV, STIs, TB, and other diseases. Mr. Sriram is co-founder and chief executive officer of Molbio Diagnostics. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shobha. Thanks for inviting me to this meeting. And uh, I'm Sridham Natarajan, a director and CEO at Molbio. So Molbio Diagnostics is a public health focused company focused on delivering innovative point of care solutions that can take healthcare right to the people. Diagnostics to the people completely independent of a laboratory, which we think is the major gap right now in terms of delivering of healthcare to all the people. Universal healthcare is our mission and that is our philosophy. And so we are doing all our best to reach this objective and bridge gaps even in very remote locations ensure the last mile connectivity so that we can deliver quality healthcare to the people who are suffering with communicable diseases like HIV, tuberculosis, STIs and so on. We are very happy to be participating in the ICASA 23 conference. And uh, we really hope this conference will deliberate on many of these aspects and come with some conclusive so solutions which can take forward elimination of these communicable diseases from the world, from all countries, irrespective of the income status. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And you have rightly said that people-centered approaches are actually crucial to fight diseases and taking health care to the doorsteps of people. That will go a long way in universal health coverage and making uh, diagnosis and treatment accessible to all. Uh, we are, Thank you very much. And uh, we are waiting for uh, Mr. Madhizma, if he's there. Madhizma, sorry. Uh, Dr. Madhizma, if he's there, or Mr. Luke. To come online. Uh, Dr. Madzima has spoken. Mr. Mm -hmm. Luke is not able to be to join us. Okay. Uh, so maybe you want to proceed further. No. Sorry, we want to wait for the PS. Yeah. Mr. Mongan is here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So is Dr. Bernard Madzima there? Will he be speaking now? Yeah. Um, just hold on. Let's yes, check. Yes. 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 Um, do you have any other speakers besides the PS? No, no. We have we had uh, 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 speakers from the other parts of the world who have spoken already. Okay, well, give me a ring to see what 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 is going on. And then, yes, uh, uh, meanwhile, sir, there are some questions. Although I said we'll take up you know, the question and answer later on, but uh, should okay. I take a few of them right now? If you permit. Yeah. Well, th thank you, uh, Madam. So uh, the permanent secretary, who is uh, representing the Minister of Health, yes. he has said that you'll be ready in about three minutes okay. to speak, to give his speech. So maybe we can proceed by way of uh, answering questions or discussions. Okay, okay. So uh, thank you, sir. So. Uh, there is a question from Osman Ahmad, a journalist from Kenya. Uh, and Osman wants to know how will ICASA help journalists from other countries to come and provide coverage in Zimbabwe? Is there any sponsorship for journalists or can you just enlighten on that? Um, yes, you can hear me. Yes, um, 
it's, it's open. We have put an advert to open up for the media. Any media personality who wants to come to his casa is free to come and register. And uh, there are really not many uh, barriers to that. So it's quite, quite open and we welcome anybody who wants to come. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Swapna Majumdar from India. Uh, Swapna says that reports say that adolescent girls and women account for around 63% of new HIV infections in Sub-Saharan Africa. How can this important conference accelerate supportive policies to equalize access to innovative prevention and treatment options for them? Yes, again, that's a very, very, very pertinent uh, question. When we hold ICASA, we hold it under th three themes. The first theme is leadership. The second one is on science. And the third one is the involvement of community. And this, that question is directed mostly at the science aspect of it. We are aware that uh, the, uh, the, the young mothers, the adolescent uh, girls, and the young people generally are considered now a key population in terms of HIV infections. And they are, they are within this program a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, um, um, uh, areas where this is going to be addressed. Specifically, we're going to address the issue of adolescent uh, HIV and AIDS within the context of ICASA. And I think that there are experts who are going to really articulate that in this particular ICASA. And some have given them as abstracts. And I hope that you can access some of the abstracts on our website. Do you want to add something on it? Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, another question is from Godfrey Shumba. Uh, we do not know from which country, from which outlet uh, God say is. Why are we not able to even diagnose people with HIV or TB or STIs early on? Many get diagnosed late. Uh, can you please uh, enlighten us on this? <laughs> yes, again, this is a, a question. This is a very, very important question. This is why it is important to strengthen advocacy towards prevention so that people present early and are, are able to, to have high sense of suspicion when certain symptoms occur to them. And usually, it, as you may also know, that a lot of our women present very late when it comes to cancer of the cervix. And again, the issue of awareness is so, so important. And that is why ICASA is there, to bring awareness to the communities, to bring awareness to countries, and to bring awareness to leaders so that they're able themselves also as the leaders to articulate this issue as they go perhaps on their own meetings, perhaps when they meet other, other leaderships. This is so important for us that we bring awareness to really drive prevention to its maximum. Thank you. But, uh, but Mr. Sriram Natarajan, like to add something. You are really making innovative diagnostic uh, technologies. And uh, also, Dr. Gilada would like to say something for this. Thank yeah. you. Yes. So I, I think uh, the big uh, missing piece here is actually access to high quality diagnostics at the lowest levels of the chain. So mm -hmm. most of the people are not able to get early diagnosis. And that this complicates the matters because then they develop into serious disease. Not only the patients are suffering, but then as a communicable disease, they are giving it to other people. And this is sort of what is sort of, you know, uh, fueling this whole chain of events, which goes against the ability to reduce the disease burden. So clearly, we need to have very innovative solutions which can be deployed right at the last mile, right next to the patient, so that they are all, they have access to them. These tools, they get diagnosed properly, they are treated pro appropriately at the right time. So not only the patients are benefiting, but also the spread of the disease yeah. is sort of getting curtailed. So probably this is where the missing piece really is uh, in the low and middle income countries. And in spite of a lot of intervention, we are seeing that the disease burden is really not coming down. And uh, clearly it's because people are not getting diagnosed appropriately and in time. So that's where I think innovative solutions are required. 
we are trying our best to do whatever we can. Uh, we have this TrueNet, which is a molecular diagnostic platform which can go to right up to the lowest levels of the chain. Uh, we are also working on a few more projects, but I think a lot of uh, innovation still have to come and a lot of efforts have to come. These also need to be promoted, uh, funded probably, and uh, even local capacity building has to be encouraged, which will further enable these kind of tools to be deployed uh, you know, to all people, uh, I mean, giving access to all people. So innovations, innovative tools, and delivery of these tools to the appropriate population, I think are the key issues which probably need, needs to be deliberated upon and implemented. Thank you. Uh, I'll just uh, call out one more question and then I would request Dr. Gilada to give his inputs. Uh, Diana says that cervical cancer and HIV, HIV is also linked. How can we bring people early on in care for a range of issues? Same human, but lot of diseases. Dr. Gilada. Thank you, uh, moderator, and thank you for the question. So I think the issue of bringing uh, services to the people is very important uh, for countries like Zimbabwe, uh, when it involves maybe even young people or the general population. So one of the things which we have done is to encourage self-testing in communities. Uh, we now uh, have uh, trained community health workers who uh, conduct uh, and train uh, people to self-test was one of the things which we, we, the challenges which we face is access to services. But specifically for, for young girls uh, and boys, uh, we have tried to, to do what is called, uh, to have models where we have targeted interventions for specific communities. For example, for the young girls, we have what is called the sister to sister programs, where young girls are put in groups and they actually taught uh, several uh, uh, skills, including uh, life skills, but also they also then access services as they uh, have those uh, those meetings. So, so, so really the issue is about empowering people so that they go to services, either they get the services where they are or they quickly go to health facilities uh, to get services. And I must also add that Zimbabwe has done very well uh, in terms of uh, our achievement of uh, the 95, 95, 95, 2025 20, targets, but we still have gaps, and definitely the gaps are in those key populations. Then we have, um, just to add, that we now have uh, gene expert machines, and we We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, sir. Uh, he is. Uh, he has to unmute. Yes. You have to unmute. Yes. Uh, people get tested early and get the treatment which they want, they deserve early on to improve the outcomes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Doctor Gilada. Uh, very nice questions are put in. And we are at a very thin border between antimicrobial resistance and syndromic management of STIs. Uh, I learned syndromic management of STIs only from Africa, where a um, lot of the STD clinics were managed by clinical officers rather than doctors. And they used to treat ulcer with algorithm. If this is ulcer, you treat this. If that doesn't heal, you treat this. So you keep on giving antibiotics. But now we are in a different era. We can diagnose them very quickly. A couple of infections which are on rising trend now in last 10 years, which in last 20, 30 years, we have been seeing less and less and less because of HIV awareness. Now they're going up again. Uh, syphilis is very high. HPV infection is very high. Gonorrhea, chlamydia, they're very high. For gonorrhea, chlamydia, there is a, a nucleic acid uh, amplification test, NAT test on gene expert. Within one and a half hour, we get the report and we can immediately treat them. Only problem is the uh, cartridges are a little expensive. So sometimes the treatment is much cheaper than the uh, diagnosis. Uh, secondly, for syphilis, we need only penicillin or long-acting penicillin that works much better. Uh, azithromycin and doxycycline do not work. Uh, we have seen uh, in the last couple of years that we finally had to resort to penicillin. 
but there is hardly any company which manufactures penicillin in the world. I salute uh, you know, Pfizer, not for mRNA vaccine, but for this penicillin injection, which is long acting penicillin they are manufacturing. And they're sell selling at a very damn cheap price, which is quarter of a dollar for an injection. Uh, secondly, when you have to treat gonorrhea and chlamydia, again, you have to decide whether it's gonorrhea or chlamydia and the single shot treatment available. So I think along with HIV, we need to expand our horizon. Number one, to prevent infections like hepatitis B and HPV through vaccination. Number two, treat other STIs quickly. So it has to be a, a expanded horizon of management of HIV and STI together. Otherwise, we'll be uh, promoting PrEP, promoting PEP. People will be using them in absence of condom. So they will be preventing HIV, but getting other STIs. So we need to do a lot of work. And I think forums like ICASA, they are good enough to again and again re-emphasize what are the current problems and current solutions? What do you show us? Thank you very much, sir. We will come back to the questions later on because we have Dr. Bernard Madisma with us, head of the 22nd ICASA Local Secretariat and Chief Executive yes. Officer of National Aid Council of Zimbabwe. Welcome, sir. Th thank you, Majareta. So at this stage, I will invite the Permanent Secretary in the Minister of Health and Child Care Dr. Aspect Maunganidze to give the Honorable Minister of Health remarks on ICASA. Dr. Maunganidze. Hello, uh, Ms. Shukla. Yes, yes, yes. 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 So he, he, the PS is having challenges in, in connecting his audio, okay. but he, he is saying that maybe if we give him another three minutes. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, sure. But, sure, uh, sure. sure. <laughs> Can you still have 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah but maybe the president of ICASA. Mm -hmm. You might want to say something. Yes, yes. Um, you know, uh, moderator, I think this is very good. I'm I'm very impressed. I really welcome this as president of ICASA, uh, this uh, Ketan Razor press conference. I, I liked uh, very much what uh, uh, Mr. Gilada, Dr. Gilada said uh, about uh, about uh, our, our the support he has given to our, our conference. And he mentioned the importance of uh, of uh, what was being articulated by Dr. Latif, this syndromic uh, uh, approach towards the treatment of HIA, of uh, STIs. I think it was very key to us at the time. We we really uh, appreciate that. And of course, Joseph Thomas, the issue of antimicrobial resistance is key. And it's so, 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 uh, I, I really appreciate that you you allowed him to come on to this and sensitize us so just that during ICASA, we're also able to really highlight this very, very important uh, issue. Uh, I have already articulated that this particular conference is based on science, and that's going to be key. That's why we've got so many abstracts that have come up. We've got over 1,500 abstracts that came up. Uh, we've got the issue of leadership. That's why you find UNAs, WHO, UNICEF, and our politicians are on it so that they are part and parcel of the fight against HIV as they provide leadership. But most importantly, we've got a huge community village that will be up there at uh, our conference center where people from all walks of life will walk into this community village and articulate and sometimes stage um, their, their worries and their concerns about the fight against HIV. And the community should always be key because they are the recipients and in fact, they are the people whom we need to take care of. So that, uh, that is the basis of this conference, science, leadership, and community. The issue of syphilis, HPV, and hepatitis B should not be ignored. We are not just going to concentrate on HIV and AIDS or TB and malaria or any other infectious diseases without talking about hepatitis B, HPV, and indeed the sexually transmitted disease, syphilis, which is now coming up again. So yes, um, we I think we are there, we're getting there, we're happy. Um, and uh, you, you, you like the idea uh, that was mentioned to take health care to the people as universal health care. Let's take it to the doorstep of the people. And ICASA is.
I would like to add what Dr. Pagas has said uh, something. Currently, we are seeing a revolution to... of uh, sexuality. That so it's a changing pattern of sex and changing pattern of STIs. We have a uh, lot of orogenital sex, a lot of anal sex, which we have never thought of. In, I'm in practice of uh, STIs for 42 years. I have never seen this kind of revolution or evolution, which we are seeing in last couple of years. So with, mm. if we need to address them, we need to look at what are the changing in uh, one of our uh, cancer hospitals in Mumbai called Tata Cancer Hospital, one India's most famous cancer hospital. 50% of the oropharyngeal cancers are because of HPV. And HPV is because of, in those people, because of orogenital sex. So I think it is going much, much beyond our understanding. And we need to understand what are the changing patterns of STI. We are seeing uh, oral, oral thrush because of orogenital sex. It's not because of low immun immunity of uh, an HIV patient. So we are seeing a lot of new things in STIs and we need to address them. We need to sensitize the community. We need to make uh, avenues available for such treatment. Otherwise, we'll be just fighting on one side HIV battle and on the other side increasing other problems. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is a question for Thomas Joseph from Michael Guarissa. Uh, Michael wants to know uh, what measures is WHO taking to address HIV drug resistance? And what is the current status, uh, if somebody can share, regarding HIV drug resistance? You want me to say here? Yeah. yeah. Um, basically, the best thing happened in HIV is management of HIV on a TLD-based regimen, that is dolutegravir. Dolutegravir is one of the most potent drugs. And even if taken with two drug combination or one drug combination yeah, as a one single, also it works. But we don't want to encourage single drug. And in a patient where the uh, things are stabilized, we can shift the patient on two drugs, that is DTG with uh, 3TC. And with this, what happened? Whichever people got uh, resistance, either to nevirapine or after nevirapine, there was a effavirence. So they were either class resistance or individual resistance. That is very well addressed with dolutegravir based regimen. And currently, almost 90 to 95% people globally, particularly in southern part of the world, they are on TLD based regimen. So I think that drug resistance issue, which is well addressed, we hardly see less than 1% or so drug resistance to DTG. So DTG is a kind of a resistance to the uh, resistance and therefore it is a good drug and that is the major solution and that is the reason the WHO also brought in dolutegravir in guideline saying that in those places where you do not have drug resistance testing best to shift on a new drug which is uh, resistant uh, having good resistance profile and that is DTG so I think we are taking care of that we cannot accept uh, the drug resistance testing will be made commonly available because it's very expensive. Viral load is fine enough and we can find out from that. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thomas, can you please uh, uh, say something? Sorry, what, what, measures Sorry, is, what measures is WHO taking to address this? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not an expert on HIV drug re resistance in particular, but we have produced a global action plan on HIV uh, drug resistance. And also we have a strategy uh, that perhaps, you know, it's worth looking at. I'm happy to uh, paste these uh, for you in the chat, uh, and then you can share that with the journalists concerned. Um, but I think the main uh, message that I want to give is that HIV drug resistance is one form of drug resistance, but there are there is drug resistance when it comes to all the diseases, whether it's antibiotics, whether it's antivirals, whether it's you know um, 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 antiparasitics or whatever it is. We have to understand that drug resistance is the biggest threat of the 21st century, because our existing medicines will stop working, and then people will not be able to be treated of the simplest infections, you know, whether these are STIs, whether these are even, you know, uh, uh, simple infections and so on. So the, the issue that really needs to be highlighted is the need to take an aggressive approach towards the stewardship of all our medicines, uh, of all uh, antivirals, of all antibiotics and so on, so that we can preserve their efficacy and so that they can continue to work 
for human beings in perpetuity. Thank, thank you very much. Yes, very mm -hmm. rightly said, Thomas. It's, it's for all diseases and that is where AMR comes uh, into being. Uh, Don Derive, yes, yes, so somebody is saying something. Thank you, Mojareta. The PS is ready. Okay, okay, sure. We will go back. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Mongar is here. Can you please go ahead? Yes. Welcome, Dr. Manganeche. Please, we are waiting for you. Yes, thank you. Sorry, they had to improvise and give me these gadgets for oh, me to be able to, to be head. Yes. Thank you very much. I'm just going to give uh, remarks uh, on behalf of our Honorable Minister, Dr. Douglas Mombeshora, the Minister of uh, Health and Child Care. Uh, I acknowledge the presence of the President of ICASA, Honorable Dr. David Parenyatwa. Um, I will not go through the whole protocol. I acknowledge all protocol that has been observed earlier. As you all are aware, Zimbabwe will be hosting the 22nd edition of the International Conference on AIDS and STIs in Africa in just over a month from now. And we thought it was prudent to meet with stakeholders in the media to provide an important, on important highlights and insights. Let me take uh, this opportunity to thank my predecessor, the Vice President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Dr. DG Nchiwenga, for the work he has done so far to guide the process. And, it, and indeed, the, His Excellency, the President of the Republic, Comrade E.D. Mnangagwa, for the wisdom and vision to get Zimbabwe working again and reintegrated within the broader community of nations. We are obviously all curious to know where we are in terms of preparedness towards the hosting of this international conference. The program is now ready and all government systems and structures from security, banking, accommodation, transportation, health, and others have been mobilized to provide the necessary support and services before and during the conference. All delegates are assured that Zimbabwe remains a peaceful destination and their security will be assured. Our providers of accommodation services are all ready and capable to meet the various requirements of the visitors. Our health systems and services have also been mobilized to ensure that both visitors and locals, locals have access to the needed services during the conference. You may have read or heard recently that there was an outbreak of cholera in some parts of Zimbabwe. I wish to assure you all and our visitors that the isolated outbreak is being contained and our surveillance system is exceptionally effective and has picked all cases and they've been treated. As part of ICASA preparations, Zimbabwe is going to host two high-level meetings. The first one being that of African First Ladies, hosted by our First Lady and the Ambassador of Health, Amai Oxilia Mnangagwa, which will focus on addressing prevention of mother-to-child transmission and elimination of newborn infections in Africa. African Ministers of Finance will attend the second meeting, which will focus on addressing domestic financing of the HIV response to reach the UN 2025 goals and the African Union Agenda 2063. As you are aware, Zimbabwe has been praised globally for the homegrown domestic funding initiative in the form of National AIDS Trust Fund. We are therefore very proud to be hosting this meeting to share our best practice while learning from the rest of the continent on other initiatives that all together can increase Africa's domestic financing of HIV and other epidemics without totally relying on external funds. Both meetings will take place on the 2nd of December in Victoria Falls. I thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, is Dr. Madesma uh, going to come online. Just wanted to know from the organizers. Will he be there or do we move on to... Thank you, Moderator. I think I I, I spoke uh, and um, I'm the one who touched on issues of logistics. Uh, 
Okay. In terms of okay. uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank so you. I've already given okay. my my my, okay. my okay. remarks. Okay. So we thank have, you. Thank you very much. We have a few more questions. Tondarai Marindare wants to know the impact of climate change on HIV AIDS programming at regional and community level. Would any of the speakers like to answer that? Impact of climate change. Cutting issue, and it will affect not only HIV, but it will affect uh, nutrition, it will affect uh, food production, it will affect the health systems, it will affect allergies, and so on and so forth. But I don't think that we can specifically say because of climate change, people will have more sex or less sex. I don't think that you can talk about uh, uh, specifically HIV in terms of that, but uh, clearly climate change is cross-cutting. Okay, uh, thank you. Then, uh, is Zimbabwe on track towards achieving 95, 95, 95? This question is from Loyola from South Africa. Thank you, Loyola, uh, for that question. Yes, so Zimbabwe is one of the five or so countries which have really achieved the 95, 95, 95 targets uh, halfway through the 2025 uh, target. So we are proud of that, and we are going to be showcasing. Uh, we have presentations, we have um, uh, researches, abstracts to be shared in terms of the work which we have done and some of the things which we think have uh, helped us to achieve the 95, 95, 95 targets halfway through you know, the third uh, deaths. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Gilada, I think we have another question for you. Uh, from Ashok Kramsaru from South Africa, a very, very noted and senior journalist who has worked with South African Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, he wants to know what progress has been made in the fight against sexually transmitted infections and uh, what do we expect the progress will be by 2030? Uh, uh, thank you very much, Ashok, for asking this question. I don't think much progress is made in identifying STIs and treating STIs beyond what we have known, except that now there is a NAT test available where we can diagnose chlamydia or gonorrhea or both in uh, just one and a half hour. And the answer is perfect because it is a PCR-based technology. Uh, beyond that, uh, th th there are uh, TPHAs and RPR and VDR done for syphilis they have been age old. Now, the only one thing which is again available and not done anywhere is the HPV PCR. HPV PCR is suggested only for female, and you have to take a sample from a cervical uh, smear. And then for male, it is not done. So uh, when we discussed with the company, they said, no, there is no protocol. I said, if the male to male sex, there is a cervical swab available. In the male to male sex, you must have an anal swab available. And then we have to do R&D and find out how do we collect the swab and we are doing. We have done more than 100 tests in uh, Mumbai. And we, we are the only place in the country, in India, to do this test. And what is our surprise is that out of 100, almost 45 are HPV positive, and out of which almost 25 are high risk HPV positive, that is either HPV 16, 18, or 45, that can cause cancer. And that is the answer we, we need to have. So we need to expand. We need to uh, expand HIV management in such a way that it encompasses all STIs, not merely HIV. And uh, not because I'm from a STD background, but we see a lot of STDs are spreading like wildfire. And uh, in the change era with male-male sex, male-female sex, bisexuality, amongst male sexuality, again, there are top, bottom, versatile, uh, 69 position, you know, you name it and we have it. So when there is such a great revolution or revolution in sexuality, we need to match that with a proper diagnosis and treatment of STIs. And we need to even reorient the STI specialists all over the world, not only in Africa. Thank you. What do you? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is a question from another journalist, Nancy. Where can journalists register for ECASA? So, would the organizers please? I think this part of this has been taken up earlier, but uh, there are a few more who want to know where and how can the journalists register. Thank you. Uh, there's a website, the ICASA website, and they can register from there. Okay. okay. And there um, is a, 
sorry. Sorry, uh, it's a uh, moderator. It's actually www at ikasa2023 dot sa a dot sa africa dot org. Okay. You can put it on. If you have put it, on, you can put it on the in the chat box. Yeah, you can okay. put it on the All right, chat. Yeah. And put it in. Uh, another journalist wants to know, pick uh, Comva, will the local participants be supported on transport and accommodation for the conference venue? You want to answer that? You can, uh, yes, they support you. What, what is happening is that uh, the, for the local participants, there are scholarships that are being offered to a lot of our population. Uh, in, in terms of, of that, in terms of transportation, but more more in terms of those who are trying to do um, um, uh, the internet, uh, virtual. Uh, the virtual, the virtual aspect. Uh, the virtual aspect is being fully supported uh, locally, and of course, some, some internationally too. So there is a, a big chunk of, of scholarships that we are offering uh, to, to facilitate some of our local uh, participants. Thank, thank you for that. Uh, now, before we close this conference, uh, I would like uh, the uh, speakers who are present to please share a short closing message for ICASA 2023. Short and sweet. Yes, Dr. Gilada. I hope and I wish that ICASA 2023 will be at a turning point and it will show the world something new. Uh, usually, whenever there is a conference, international IS conference or ISE, we always expect some uh, announcements will come. But rather than that, any new drug or new uh, thing announcement, you should show the world what is the new way of tackling HIV and STIs and antimicrobial resistance. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sridham Natarajan. I think the deliberations that we've had so far has already set the tone for the conference. Clearly, there are issues that have been identified, antimicrobial resistance, STIs, controlling STIs, and also having innovative solutions and innovative tools that can enable all this to happen is the probably the, going to be the focus of the conference. And we really hope that uh, all this will be deliberated and this conference will come out very successful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Morganich. Is Dr. Morganich there? Because last of all, I would like to request Dr. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So yes. sorry. Yeah, it's, it's the pronunciation. So maybe it's Dr. Mazima, and my last remarks would be to encourage everyone to come to Zimbabwe in December for ICASA 2023, and not only learn about HIV, AIDS, and STIs, but also to experience the hospitality of the country. So we look forward to seeing you in a month's time. Thank you. Thank you. And last of all, from the president of the conference. Yes, I'm delighted that there's so much enthusiasm for ICASA 2023 in Harare. We, our last ICASA was in Durban. It was fully virtual. This one is a mixture of being virtual and physical attendance. And I'm hoping that as we attend, new innovative methods will be found to push forward the agenda of stopping HIV by 2030. In other words, people, we must now have uh, the last killer instinct to say, where, how far can we just finish off HIV, and that needs a lot of innovation and a lot of inclusivity. So yes, we're delighted. Please come, please let's share, and then we get forward as a human race. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of you, and hope some of you at least meet in Harare in Zimbabwe. Until then, let's hope for the best that by 2030, we are able to get rid of this disease altogether. Thank you very much.